The water were Wat Kadash. The water, Kai. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All praises to Ahaya Kisid. That's all praises to Anoki Said. That's all praises to the great I Am loving kindness. Bahashim Yeshaya. Bahashim Moza the Lamb. In the name of the Messiah. In the name of the Hamasiach. Shalom family. This is little son Sabal Nabaya. Family, I am not going to take a lot of your time today. This is going to be a relatively short lesson. So we are going to skip the normal first introduction that we always go through. Although you should go to it yourself. We always go to Isaiah 28 verses 9 and 10. Then we go to Psalm 119 and we get precepts for Isaiah 28 verses 9 and 10. And there are a plethora of precepts for that all throughout Psalm 119. Family, we are going to jump straight to Psalm chapter 2. We are going to the second Psalm and let's go ahead and read the whole chapter. Psalm chapter 2. It says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So family, right off the back, this says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Then it says that the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. And we're not going to reread the entire chapter, but just listen to the simplicity that is written in this chapter. It is letting you know that the people imagine a vain thing. But look who is to blame for it. It says the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. So it's not it's not by mistake that the people are imagining a vain thing. Now, family, let's go to the book of Acts. Let's go to Acts chapter 4 and let's read verses 25 through 37. That's Acts chapter 4, verses 25 through 37. It says, Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? 
The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against the Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child, Messiah, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Moza the Lamb. And when they had prayed, and place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness, and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common." And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Messiah, and the great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of those things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had needed need. And Hoses, who by the apostles was, was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and the county of Cyprus, having land, sold it and bought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So, family, now we read in the book of Acts where they are quoting Psalm chapter 2. But it's the same issue. It's saying the people imagine the vain thing. But look what it says after that. It says that these people became gathered together and then they had all things common. Do y'all see that? They were of one heart and one mind together and they had all things common. So what's going on here is it's letting you know that the people had a change in their mindset or that is to say these people repented do you understand me they repented their mind was changed they turned around in their thought process and no longer was this this is mine this is mine that's mine no all things were common so family when you when you start to study what is required of a Zion? What is required of a righteous and holy community? You find out very quickly that all things common is a big part of that because no one in a Zion, including, including the Zion where I am right now, while I'm recording this message, let me tell you, it is, it is absolutely amazing that all things common is a big, huge part of that, but it's a mindset. So understand that getting away from that worldly mindset can be difficult, but you can do it. As a matter of fact, the Messiah can give you the strength to overcome that mindset. He can help you with that repentance, but there's a reason why I'm bringing this up. And this isn't actually the focus of this lesson. I'm just wanting you to understand that you have to come out of the world and stop thinking like the world. But what did we just read in both of these passages? That the kings of the earth were gathered together. You see, family, they, they have a thing about the way that you think. They want you to think a certain way. Are you hearing me? They want to keep you plugged in to whatever it is they're dishing out. So no matter what your vice is, whether 
you're reading all the time or you are watching TV all the time or whether you are listening to the radio all the time, whatever it is that they're putting out there for you to soak up, they don't care how you soak it up. They say, oh, you think because you're reading about it that it puts you over the person who's stuck in front of the TV. No, it's all the same. If you're soaking in the information that they are disseminating, then you are taking part in what they are giving to the people. You are, what's the word? You are drinking the Kool-Aid. Now, let's switch up for a second. You guys remember I did a lesson I did a lesson um, quite a while ago, actually, maybe over a year ago. Matter of fact, I'm sure it was over a year ago. It was probably a year and a half ago. I did a lesson about the Decadarchi, the fallen, those who fail in Genesis chapter six. And we went through the back of the book of remembrance of first and second of Chi, and we read each one. We read each of the fallen, and we read about what those things are that they are over, and I just want to remind you about one of them. So let's go to the back of first and second of Chi, the book of remembrance, and let's read about Zequel, the flash fire of God, that is to say, generated electricity. Zequel is the eighth from Semihaza. When Zequel was first created, he had the definition that God is life giver and the source of all consciousness. He had this spirit so strongly, he could have been a major factor in raising people from the dead. He had the ability to be the common thread between all people from the dead. He had the ability to be the common thread, or I read the same sentence again, it's okay. He had the ability to be the common thread between all forms of life, from the earth itself to every plant, animal, and man. He could have been the elder linking man with the Messiah in terms of the language of repentance, which is the consciousness of the word in some element that is speaking to a person. He could have been the elder of the language of repentance. He brought the feeling of home. But instead, Zequel chose the definition that man can make life. Evil has better life. Alien life is superior. In choosing this, he became the enemy of the priesthood that teaches repentance. And he is the enemy of all the people who are natural and close to the earth and close to the Messiah. He is the herald that the unnatural is superior. He is the evil spirit of being destitute and having no home and no one to love you and of being alone. Zequel taught the signs of lightning flashes. He is the master of crossbreeding and all the Nephilim. Zequel is the master of homosexuals and bestiality. He teaches the manipulation of life and genetic engineering. He is the instructor of the Nephilim. Zequel teaches that man should deny the natural and worship the supernatural. He is the master of fantasy and fornication and vain imaginings. In the last days, he will force or rape the Urkadeshi. He is the enemy of good mental health and faith in God. So family, now we read about Zequel, about generated electricity. And we see that he is the master of fantasy and fornication and vain imaginings. And family, I know you're over there saying, well, hey, I don't have a problem with vain imaginings. I know when I'm imagining the wrong thing. But let me ask you this question. Do you? Family, I want to turn you all on to something. I want to turn you on to something, family. Family, what I want to turn you on to, you can find this simply by going into the Oxford Encyclopedias. There are other places too. I saw that Wiley College, they had a a, a pretty good thing on it. I almost read from that one. But since Oxford is such a well-known name, I'm going to go ahead and read from the Oxford Encyclopedias. I'm going to read to you about transportation theory. It says, 
Transportation theory. Narrative transportation theory focuses on the causes and consequences of an individual being immersed in a story or transported into a narrative world. Transportation refers to the feeling of being so absorbed in a story that connection to the real world is lost for some time. It includes cognitive, hold on, I lost my place because I had to scratch my head. Oh, there we go. It includes cognitive engagement, emotional experience, and the presence of mental imagery. The experience is a key mechanism underlying narrative influence on recipients' attitudes and beliefs, particularly in combination with enjoyment and character identification. Narrative persuasion through transportation has been demonstrated with a wide variety of topics, including health, social uses, and consumer products. Transportation can occur across media through written, audio, or video narratives, and for both factual and fictional stories. It is typically measured with a self-report scale, which has been well validated. And then it cites Green and Brock 2000. Transportation is conceptually similar to flow. And then it cites Sizzla McLaughlin, I can't pronounce this word, 1990. So it's similar to flow and presence. Both flow and presence pertain more to being immersed in the experience rather than specifically in a narrative. While individuals are transported, their mental systems, capacities, become concentrated on events occurring in the story, causing them to lose track of time, lack awareness of the surrounding environment, and experience powerful emotion as a result of their immersion in the narrative. Transported recipients may also lose some access to real knowledge, making them more likely to adapt their real world beliefs and behaviors to be more consistent with the story to which they are exposed. Transportation theory suggests several mechanisms to explain this phenomenon, including reduced counter arguing, connections with with characters, heightened perceptions of realism, the formation of vivid mental imagery, and emotional engagement. Personality factors also affect the extent of transportation. Narrative recipients vary in transportability on their dispositional tendency to become transported, and they may be influenced differently by narratives due to a difference in their need for effect. Individuals high in need for effect are more likely to be transported into narratives. Additional factors such as story quality and points of similarity between the reader and the story can also influence transportation. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't understand what you just read, then allow me to break it down for you. What this is talking about is not only not only the fictional narratives that we are given, but also the non-fictional narratives that we are given or supposedly non-fictional narratives that we are given. Because what happens is we as a people continually connect ourselves to these false narratives. This is the tool of Zequel. This is what he is using. This is what he is doing. So on a lower level, we can talk about things that are pure fantasy and we know them to be pure fantasy. Things like movies, television shows, video games, things that entertain us. Because we all know that we have met people who have a hard time disconnecting from those false things. They get so into this fantasy storyline that they let it affect their real life. We all know that that happens. As a matter of fact, there are several, uh, what are they called? Um, real world multiplayer 
role playing games where they actually have to write a disclaimer on these games to let people know, hey, this is a game. Don't forget to unplug from this game and go and eat and wipe your behind and take a bath and actually live your life because that's how that's how well these works of fiction can actually affect a person. But let's talk about the non-fictional things or supposedly non-fictional things. Because if they give you a false narrative, if they tell you that you come from a people that you don't really come from, then you start to connect with that. If they tell you that you come from a continent that you don't really come from, and you start to connect with that, then you will believe that and you will defend that, even though there's no actual evidence in your immediate natural life to actually connect you to that because here's what they understand if left alone if left alone remember there are precepts in life family so if left alone and you don't have these intrusions from the government and the school system teaching you these false narratives if left alone then you're going to go out in nature and the holy spirit is going to speak to you because there are precepts in life and this this heel might tell you, hey, I'm a heel. I am Regal. I remember the steps of all that has occurred upon me. And guess what? Your great, 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 great grandfather walked across the same spot where you are now. And he was a lot like you. He was a man of the most high. And he felt very deeply about what the Lord called him to do. And you have a similar vision of created purpose. Are you understanding me? These kings of the earth, the governments, what they have done, they have found a way to disconnect us from what I'm showing on the screen right now. Do you see this? This is all reality. This is the world that we live in all right here. This is the true reality. Hear me. The er the Ir Kadeshi are the home. Are you hearing me? It was created all for us. We are the object of creation. That's who man is. So understand that they all love you and creation knows your vision of created purpose. But the government can't have you doing that. So there exists a thing called transportation theory and they will transport you to another time. They will get you to believe a false narrative. They will have you thinking you are somebody you are not. And they got a million different ways to do it. But here's how you counter that. You unplug. You get your face out of the encyclopedia that they gave you. Because you can only you can only trust those facts so far. What you have to do is you have to go to the hills who remember, to the rocks who remember, to the trees that are spreading the good news and talking with the wind. Are you hearing me? All of the Ir Kadeshi are here for you. The Messiah is within them and they are a resource, but you have to be aware of them being there and you have to be aware of the Messiah and you've got to feel them. You have got to repent. That's the name of this game. With that said, family, I love each and every one of you. The water, Kai. All praises to Anoki said, Bahashim Moza, the lamb. This is little son Sabal saying much love and much shalom.